Hello, everyone, uh, and welcome to this uh, safety and acceptance of bio-based products webinar. My name is Africa from Innovarum. I'm marketing and communications responsible. And me, together with my colleague Inigo, who you will meet later, will be uh, hosting and presenting, introducing everyone in this webinar. So let's get into it, right? What are we going to be talking today about? We will be, ta we'll be talking about creating new products from bio waste, natural, from bio waste. And this raises some natural questions. Are consumers ready to embrace products made, made from waste? We will get into that. In order to answer these questions, we have gathered uh, various projects, um, Scalibur, Hoop, Bali Waste, and Waste Up. Uh, together, they have organized this series of webinars. Uh, please, next slide. Perfect. Uh, this series of webinars, which, which is called Urban Circular Bioeconomy Webinar Series, and it started in May uh, 2021. Next slide. Okay, so the series uh, has counted with um, uh, various, various events, uh, which dealt into different topics, uh, selective collection of urban byways, the stakeholders engagement. We are now we are now in the fifth uh, webinar of the series, and there's only one more to go, which will be about policy influence. We will get a little bit more into that idea in another webinar. Next slide, please. So uh, before we start, uh, let's do some basic housekeeping on how you will be able to interact and participate in the webinar. The webinar is being recorded, so uh, you will know that this webinar is being recorded. Uh, this both the recording and the slides will be circulated to all registered participants. Besides, uh, here in this webinar, attendees are in listen mode only. So how can you do questions? So please use the Q&A button that you will find uh, probably at the bottom of the screen. Uh, usually is there. Uh, don't be shy and ask as many questions as you want. We will not be able to answer and write in a moment, but we will review them in the Q&A uh, moments that there will be spread throughout the webinar. You can also upvote questions from fellow attendees. This way we will make sure that uh, we are answering the most popular questions. Next slide. Okay, so uh, just before we start, uh, let's get stay in touch. Um, oh, okay, no, sorry, my bad. So I think we're going to just start and uh, I think it's time for me to uh, leave the floor to the first speaker of this webinar, who is going to be Amaya from Geiker. Um, please, Amaya, the floor is yours. Feel free to share your presentation. Amaya, is everything okay? Can you share your presentation, please? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. I'm trying to find this one. Uh, I, I cannot find the bottom. Okay, there's the bottom. There's a screen. Yes, I'm trying to. <laughs> um, okay, wait. Do you want me to go with you quickly over it? There should be a green uh, share a screen button at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, no, I don't see it. Wait. Um, for some reason, I left the window of the Zoom. And I can't find, okay, here I am. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, and just one more thing, remember to turn your video camera on so we can see you as well. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, start video here. It's okay. <laughs> perfect. Yeah, we can see you. That's perfect. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. <laughs> All good. Now if you can uh, put the presentation mode. Perfect. Okay, so I will just leave you here. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, so good morning, everyone. Um, well, thank you very much for inviting Geiger to attend this, this webinar. Uh, I am Amaya Garcia. I work in uh, Geiger Technological Center. Um, it's based in the Basque Country in the north of Spain. 
And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, break my talk in three main points. Firstly, I will give you a brief uh, information regarding the new viable nutrients from Value Waste Project. Secondly, I will talk specifically about novel food and the le le legislation. And thirdly, uh, I will talk about safety risk assessment. So um, the Bio Waste Project proposes an integrated system for urban bio waste valorization into key strategic products for the European Union. And uh, what it's a challenge is that uh, we have to integrate valorization system in a city context and recover products with a market value. So in order to do that, the value waste project has three processing lines. Uh, maybe this slide has been seen before in, in other webinars, but it's a very useful thing to see what we are talking about. So basically what we do, we get the urban bio waste and that is uh, treated by different management plants who are going to obtain different high value products. In our case, we will have food and feed ingredients from uh, methanotrophic bacteria food and feed grade proteins obtained from insects. And uh, the last one, the, uh, we will obtain also a bio-based fertilizer. So in my talk, I will focus mainly on the first two, the food and feed uh, products, and then we will talk about the safety. So uh, Geiger is part, is leading the work uh, package five of the value waste project. And uh, among our objectives, we have to assess functionality and potential applications of bio waste derived products. And also we have to demonstrate that these end products are fully safety. So uh, when we talk about this kind of products, we have to introduce the word novel food. Uh, why? Well, because according to European uh, regulation, any food that has not been consumed significantly prior to May 1997 is considered to be a novel food. And although I haven't explained it here, just to know that there are 10 different categories of novel food, and uh, the ones that are obtained in this case of the value waste projects obtained from bacteria or obtained from insects, they are one of those uh, categories. So if we talk about re legislation, the regulation 2015-2283 on novel foods, what it says, it introduces a centralized assessment and authorization procedure that makes things more efficient. Uh, this re uh, regulation was updated in 2018, and since that moment, the European Commission has been responsible for authorizing novel foods. And as part of that procedure of authorization, they can ask EFSA to conduct a scientific risk assessment to establish the safety. So for those who may not know, EFSA stands for European Food Safety Authority. And what they have to do, they receive the uh, order from the European Union and uh, they get the dossier from the applicant. Uh, the applicant would be the company or the person who wants to uh, register an over food. And they uh, give an opinion about that, that uh, dossier of information. So um, they, they started uh, like other uh, authorities doing this kind of risk assessment, but with the updating of the regulation, they have become the, the only uh, organization to do this risk assessment dossiers. So uh, they, you can find different gui guidance on their webpage and uh, the one that is used uh, for preparing the application for the novel foods is the one that I show in this slide and it's based on the regulation that I talked about before and it, you can download it in the web page. Uh, more recently, like early this year in January 2021, uh, they have uh, published the first complete assessment of a proposed insect derived food product, which you can also see that the, the title there. So uh, in the value waste project, as I've said before, we have two kinds of novel foods. So what we want to do is talk about the safety that we have to do with them, that what, what procedure we have to follow. Oh. Okay, now. 
So uh, when we talk about safety, it's clear that uh, food safety affects us all. And the risk analysis uh, comprises three separate, but at the same time connected elements, which are uh, the risk assessment, the risk management, and the risk communication. So the risk assessment, assessment would be the one that is uh, science-based. You have to prove the evidences. With that data, the risk management would be the one who would say, maybe take legal measures or maybe take uh, other control options that could be necessary. And then uh, both type of risks have to interact with each other and exchange information, which will go to the risk communication element. So in my talk, as we are talking about um, safety um, in a scientific uh, point of view, I will focus on the risk assessment. So the risk assessment uh, has four main steps. Uh, the first one will be the hazard identification. That is, uh, could this food or anything that this food has be harmful? Uh, then uh, we have to characterize that hazard that um, what are the effects of that uh, harmful situation and can we get a safe level? Then we would talk about the exposure assessment, who may be harmed and uh, at what level it could be harmful. And with all these three steps, we get the risk characterization, which is how likely is that people will experience and at what level uh, they can cause harm in real life. So uh, the guidance, the EPSAS guidance that I talked about before uh, gives us the uh, clues or the points that we have to follow to prepare um, an application of, uh, to authorize a novel food. And among them, we have this list of uh, things that we have to fulfill. And um, I would like to focus my attention on the last part of the, of the list which are the ATME, which is uh, absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion, nutritional information, toxicological data, and allergenicity. Um, if, you, the, if you go to um, feed additives uh, re legislation and guidances, the EFSA says that uh, to follow the um, novel food authorization application, it's good to follow the same strategy, the toxicity strategy that they, they uh, propose for the food uh, additives. That's why I put this slide here. As you can see, um, we follow different tires and that's because um, on one side, we don't want to spend more money that it's needed. I mean, you don't have to do extra studies if you, if you don't need to. And on the other side, and for obvious reasons, uh, as some of the study has, has to be conducted on animals, we don't want to use more animals than the ones that are needed. So uh, the tire one is the one that you have to start from. And uh, as you can see in the slide, the first point is absorption. Okay, so absorption was the A from the ATME in the first in the list of, of things that we have to fulfill. And um, the good thing is that if you can prove that your food is not absorbed, uh, but you have to prove it scientifically, you, you may uh, avoid to do other toxicity studies. But if you, don't, if you cannot prove it, or if it's absorbed, uh, then you, go, you have to go through the whole strategy. So uh, basically, the toxicity strategy they have to do is uh, general toxicity and subchronic toxicity. In the general toxicity, there are two in vitro tests. All of them have the OECD guideline available, and uh, it's good that you should do it under good laboratory practices. Uh, then, so for the general toxicity, you have the bacteria reverse mutation test or the AIMS test and the micronucleus test. With both tests, we get the three endpoints that general toxicity asks you to fulfill, which are the single mutations and then um, um, numerical and structural mutations. And then you have to, in this case, yes, it's an in vivo study, you have to use cats and it's a 90 day study, uh, a toxicity 90 day study in rats. So uh, depending 
on the results you get in this tire, then you have to go or not to the next one. So it's good to follow this strategy to, to have your novel food safety risk assessment. Uh, if I go back, another, how did I do that? This one. Um, another point, an important point, was the nutritional information of the novel food. And here, basically, what you have to do, you have to demonstrate that the novel food is not nutritionally disadvantageous under the conditions you propose to be used. I mean, it, it doesn't have to have any disadvantages. And then the last one I left is the allergenicity. I, um, it's in the, in the last part, and if you can see it in the uh, toxicity testing, it doesn't appear uh, until the tire three, like in a specialized uh, studies, it could be the immunotoxicity or the allergenicity. Um, well, this is good to do it previously, but the problem is that uh, why is this so challenging? It's because the mechanisms underlying the immune-mediated adverse reaction are not completely understood. So yes, we have a list of typical allergens, but we, in this case of novel foods, we need to know more about the proteins that could make uh, an adverse reaction to the body. So um, it is, it has, and, and it's more precaution. So maybe you put uh, some allergens that they may not have the noble food, but it's good to me uh, to have a precautionary um, point of view than, than not doing anything. So with this one, um, I finished my talk uh, with two, two um, points, two messages that I want to give. The first one is that um, to in, in order to ensure the highest level of protection in human health, novel food has to undergo a safety assessment before placed on the European markets. That means that every novel food that can be authorized is because they have gone all through this process. And just to make people more, um, you know, accept these kind of things, uh, the food safety system in the European Union has among the highest standards in the world. So uh, the safety assessment we do in novel foods, it's really high. Um, just to finish, it's good to be June because um, in June, um, we have two different things going on regarding with food. Uh, the first one, uh, the, for those that I don't know if you know, the 7th of June was the world safety, the food um, of, of food. Um, and the EFSA has uh, launched a campaign that uh, I think is going to go through the whole summer to show that um, you know, the, safe, the food and the safety are uh, linked together and, and the science has to do a lot of, a lot of uh, with it, has, is, is related a lot with it. And uh, the other one is the um, Food for Future, which is a Congress that started yesterday here in Bilbao and it finishes tomorrow. And well, we talk about many things. And one of the things they talk about is, is this uh, um, obtaining proteins from other sources rather than the ones that we are used to. So it could be also talking about novel foods in this case. So um, that was it. Thank you very much. And um, I don't know if there are questions or um, I have to answer now or maybe later. Okay, thank you, Maya. Thank you for the great presentation. So um, I don't know if we have some questions. I will leave here in your my colleague here for that. At this moment, hello. The, we have one question from Miguel Suarez from Fetenma. We said that what is the current status in the procedure for novel food for insects, Amaya? Uh, well, I I. As, as, I saw, as I, I, I put in one slide, in January this year, the EFSA has authorized the, or has authorized, no, sorry, has given uh, the scientific opinion of um, insect derived protein. Uh, the EFSA has a specific guidelines for, or guidances for insect derived products. Uh, you have to focus uh, mainly on the procedure and the uh, feed, feed of the larvae to get the insects and then how you do it. But um, the current status, I mean, it's for all of them is the same. You, you have to follow all the uh, points that the risk assessment analysis asks you to do it. 
and then you put all that information together and you uh, the European member will ask EFSA to make an opinion, a scientific opinion about it. It can take, I don't know, months, six, nine months to do it. And then uh, with that scientific opinion of the EFSA, the European Union will decide if that is authorized or not. So. Okay, thank you, Amaya, for your answer. Thank you, Miguel, for your questions. If it is uh, any more questions, uh, from the audience. If not, I think we could uh, continue to, to stay on time. So Africa, thank you Amaya for your presentation and for answering the questions. So we, later we will have a longer uh, discussion uh, moment. So we could continue with the conversation later. So Africa, if we could continue with the... Of course. So uh, moving on to the next presentation of this webinar, we're going to have a, a speaker. No, our next speaker is Gianluca, researcher and project manager and at Novamont. So uh, please, uh, Gianluca, the, the floor is yours. Go ahead and share your presentation. Thank you so much, Africa. Good morning to everybody. I'm going to share my screen. Just just a moment, please. Can you see it? Okay, just a moment. I before starting. Uh, uh, before starting, uh, I think that is. Uh, I thank you very much for the invitation to this uh, webinar. It is very important for us to uh, to take part and join this kind of uh, discussion, uh, in particular for the acceptance of bio-based products. Products, since we are uh, a company uh, aiming at introducing into the markets uh, uh, bio-based products, and so we are very uh, we paid a lot of attention about the, um, uh, the public acceptance of this kind of product, and uh, as well as the. Um, uh, as the uh, to, to respect the, all the requirements, the, uh, all the requirements for this kind of uh, product. Uh, I am uh, Gianluca Anselmo. Uh, I am I work as a researcher for Novamont, and um, I will um, I will provide this uh, presentation on your behalf. And I will just start uh, with the little introduction of uh, Novamont. Uh, Novamont is uh, an international leader in the bioplastic uh, sector and, um, uh, and uh, over its uh, 30 years of experience in this, uh, in this sector, uh, uh, the, the, the main mission and uh, let me say its uh, vocation is particularly dedicated in uh, um, developing materials and chemicals uh, for the um, uh, to, to solve uh, to solve environmental problems. Uh, I don't know if there is uh, any problem with the presentation mode. Just a second, please. Yes, thank you. There is going. Let's try again. Okay. This is the double uh, the double mode with toughest problems somehow. This one, please. Not in this way. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Got it. You can also try the reading mode, which is there instead of the presentation mode. The, yeah, presentation and the one to the right to the left. A technical problem, sorry. Oh, no, it's fine. Okay, I got it. I got it. Just, just a second. Just a second, please. No. Uh, no, like that we don't see anything. Now? I think it is okay. Well, we still don't see the full screen, but I think we can continue. Uh, okay. okay. Okay, let, let me try just, mm -mm, just no, one. Basically. Just one. Okay. okay, go ahead. Give it a try.
It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry. We keep up. We keep. We keep uh, going like this. I'm sorry for that. We can it still was, see it, it. It was good in the rehearsal, but now I cannot manage it in the proper way. I'm sorry. Oh, it's fine. It's okay. fine. That's good, right? Okay. So as I as I as I was saying, uh, our uh, the, the mission of Nolomot and its particular vocation is dedicated to the developing of materials and biochemicals through the integration of chemistry and agriculture, and so uh, within uh, the framework of a circular uh, uh, economy approach, uh, in particular with the integration of uh, local area and providing uh, those uh, those solution throughout the entire life of cycle of, uh, of the products that have been implemented. And in particular, Novamont is also a certified B corporation. Uh, so uh, particularly taking into the particular attention to all the stakeholders involved in the whole uh, life cycle of products that have, been, that have been produced and implemented. So um, as, a, as an innovative company, at the core, the core model is represented by research and development. And accord, accordingly, Novamont takes part in uh, different uh, um, uh, the um, different international projects uh, in collaboration with uh, leading Italian and international companies with the aim of creating strategic and partnership between the research and industrial agriculture in order to generate new supply chains. Uh, among those projects uh, uh, that, are, that have uh, the, um, uh, well, with the main objective of valorizing, of valorizing bio waste, uh, uh, waste up is um, uh, is one of one of that. In particular, the, the objective of this project is the transformation, the disruptive the transformation of urban bio waste into bio based product. And uh, in particular, within this project, will be developed the um, uh, pilot um, uh, and will be established a pilot uh, um, demonstration of this uh, valorization of bio waste in different. Uh, European cities uh, from the from Spain to, to Greece, uh, in particular by the conversion of different urban uh, bio waste, uh, going from uh, uh, meat and fish waste as well as uh, coffee byproducts uh, and uh, used cooking oil. That is one of the uh, feedstock that will be used by Novamont, and so uh, particular uh, um, bio based products will be. Uh, obtained within a circular economy approach and within uh, the application of different technologies and different expertise from the partners of this project. Um, also, uh, within the Scalable project, uh, also it's uh, at the core of this project is the, the objective of uh, the um, uh, better uh, waste management. And so uh, different uh, stakeholders are involved as well as research uh, centers and the companies in order to find innovative solutions to transform uh, uh, urban food and uh, sewage sludge into value-added products. Along these value chains, different expertise have been, uh, will be applied, will be involved uh, in order to, um, uh, to, to create uh, uh, new value chains and uh, in particular for, in order to create new business models and uh, in particular taking, uh, um, uh, taking uh, at, uh, at the center also the acceptance by the public uh, and so uh, of, the, of the products that will be implemented. Uh, as well, all the, all the activities that Novamont will develop within those projects, uh, Waste Up and Scalibur are well integrated into its uh, uh, value chains uh, that is made up of different uh, proprietary technologies, uh, as well as innovative processes. Uh, and in particular, in the last years, uh, more and more efforts have, have, uh, have been spent towards the upstream integration, that is the utilization of renewable, re renewable sources, uh, as well as uh, scraps uh, and byproducts uh, uh, coming from different, uh, uh, from, uh, different uh, agriculture uh, procedures uh, in order to be valorized for the generation of new of building blocks to be applied into bio-based products. And in the case of uh, Scalibur, in particular, will be used uh, the sugars coming from the organic fraction of the municipal solid waste, as well as for uh, uh, waste up will be used the, the uh, used cooking oil coming from canteens and restaurants, uh, the so-called Oreca um, uh, residues of, uh, of restaurants, uh, and it will be converted in by fermentation and also chemical processes into new building blocks to be applied in, in our uh, value chains for the 
production of bio-based materials uh, in order to find innovative solutions. Uh, and so uh, all the products and all those building blocks will be uh, integrated and will be used by Novamont uh, uh, into its uh, for the bio-based production of uh, polyesters and compostable application, in particular for the packaging application and also as waste bags. And all those products uh, um, uh, embodies a solution for the uh, optimal collection of, uh, uh, of waste. And it is an, an important aspect uh, that will return to uh, urban context. As we start for the uh, utilization of urban waste, and we will return to the public by improving, by, by launching and introducing uh, products that will be very, um, um, that will be very val valuable for the collection of organic fractions of waste in order to reduce the uh, waste to the landfill and incineration. So now let's move to uh, practical examples that have been uh, um, uh, in which Novamont has uh, taken part during the last years. And in particular, I will start with the uh, case study uh, launched in Milan, uh, in particular dealing with the waste, uh, waste recyc recycling. Uh, also, thanks to one of the leading material uh, produced by Novamont, that is Matter B. Um, actually, uh, Milan uh, became uh, one of the first European cities for the separate collections. It is a very big city with uh, more than 1 million and 500 so people. Uh, uh, actually, uh, the, the campaign of uh, uh, waste collection door to door started in 2012, and uh, it was also a boost and was uh, um, a take, uh, takes, uh, took advantage of the use of biodegradable and compostable bags that are suitable for the processing in composting and in aerobic digestion facilities. Uh, as well uh, as uh, more than 130 tons of organic waste were collected, they were very pure. That is another important aspect for the uh, pro proper uh, um, use of those waste uh, as a composting, uh, um, in particular for the compost. And, uh, and also Milan was, uh, um, uh, was a case study that was, uh, um, uh, that would be, that was, uh, this, is, this case study was also implemented in other European contests in European city. cities, uh, larger with, with, the, with the same size and location as, as Milan. And, uh, and we, we talked about this case study, but the, uh, one of the important thing in this kind of application in a urban context is to provide the, the optimal tools for the collection, in particular for the collection of, uh, of waste in this case. And uh, uh, particularly were applied uh, um, uh, dedicated uh, wheeled bin for the residential unit and as well as aerated bin for optimal ox oxy oxygenation of, um, of uh, waste in order to reduce odors and liquids. In particular, uh, one of the most important tool in this uh, campaign was the distribution and the utilization of matter B bags for domestic use. And all those products, in particular, those bags are biodegradable and compostable according to European um, uh, requirements standard for the EN uh, 13432. Um, uh, um. And so uh, thanks to the, uh, to the results achieved with the campaign of door-to-door -door collection in Milan, another campaign was launched in Milan outdoor markets. Uh, this uh, experimental uh, study was conducted in five months in uh, uh, 2016 in, in 15 open markets in Milan, as well in this case were not were uh, uh, were involved the product dealers. Uh, more than one uh, 1,000 were uh, were involved, and in this case uh, uh, was uh, it was important not only the proper collection of uh, uh, of organic waste. Uh, it was nearly the 16 percent of the total produced by the market, but uh, the, a very important aspect was also that uh, it was uh, improved the post-sale condition of the areas, thus allowing the uh, public company in Milan uh, responsible for the waste collection to optimize cleaning times and so giving back the area to the citizens so that they will, could, uh, could leave also this, uh, this space. And for this initiative, uh, AMSA, that is the public company uh, responsible for waste collection and Novamont won the Solidar Sol Solidaritas Social Award in 2017. In the, in the category of sustainable consumption. 
And so given those uh, extremely positive results, uh, this project was also launched and extended to all uh, uh, to other uh, open markets. And uh, as, uh, as for the door-to-door -door collection, also in this case, uh, the, the strategy was implemented with, uh, uh, with uh, appropriate tools. So in this case, uh, were, um, were distributed and used for the, uh, for the good success of this, uh, of this project, uh, steel trestles, and also appropriate matter B bags with a capacity of more than 70, uh, 70 liter. And also in this case, all the products were biodegradable and compostable according to European standard. But another important aspect was the communication of this, of this project among the public. In particular, uh, given the, the case of Milan, that is a multi-ethnic population, uh, were prepared and were um, uh, distributed instruction in five languages in order to meet all uh, the, um, the different people living in this uh, urban context. But, and um, according to the, to the results uh, reached by the experimentation in Milan, uh, uh, either in door-to-door uh, -door and also uh, by open market experience, another project, another case study was launched and uh, performed, uh, carried out in, the, um, in, uh, in, a biggest, in, a, in a big city, that is New York City. This uh, project, uh, this experiment was uh, uh, carried out in 2018 and it was it involved the separate uh, um, organic waste in residential areas in the in, um, in Manhattan. In this case, uh, six buildings were selected and were collecting uh, uh, data. Were collecting uh, uh, among four weeks in order to uh, select, in order to um, to see uh, the, the the monitoring all this project at uh, different levels. Also in this case was important uh, the distrib distribution of, uh, uh, of uh, appropriate tools uh, as a compostable bags and also Novamont, so in this case, take part in this experimentation. And also was important the communication among the people involved in this kind of experimentation and the good results was achieved. Uh, in particular, uh, was um, uh, the, the proper collection uh, also in this case uh, was important for the. Yes, Thank I will. You. I will try to. I'm there. terribly sorry. Yes, the connection broke down. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, no. It was. Uh, it's it's technical issues. Yeah, <laughs> yeah thank you. So audience is still there. So you will, you you have a few minutes until uh, you. I to try to share screen. my screen, but I, I cannot. No. Thank you, everyone, uh, for your patience. I cannot, I cannot share my screen. I'm sorry. I believe the host needs to give us new permissions again. Of course. Thanks. Okay, should be working now. Give it a try. Okay, try to. Thank you. Here I am. Can you see it now? Great. So yes. Yeah, probably. The connection was interrupted at the, the last case you study. That is. So there you have some minutes to, to conclude your presentation. Okay. Thank you all the audience for the patients and thank you, Gianluca. Yeah, thank you all. I'm terribly sorry for this. Uh, oh, <laughs> no problem. Technical things. For the happen. audience, yeah. Okay, uh, uh, probably that was uh, the, the connection lost at this at this stage. So the that the um, the, the separate collection uh, that was implemented not only for the outdoor uh, uh, door to door collection in Milan, but also for the outdoor, in particular in uh, uh, open markets. Uh, and it was an impor uh, very important. Uh, uh, experiment in order for uh, for the um, for the proper uh, uh, for the proper collection in uh, in, uh, in a different uh, in, in different environment. In particular, in this case, for the for the open markets, it was an important experiment also for uh, to, to optimize the the cleaning time of the of this area in order to give back to the citizens. For this initiative, AMSA, that is the public. Uh, uh, company responsible for the waste collection in Milan and the Novamont won the 
uh, Sodalitas Social Award and uh, also given uh, uh, according to the extremely positive results this, this project was uh, launched and extended in all open areas. And again, also in this case, the proper communication of the event and also distribution of the appropriate tools was very, uh, was very important. Uh, and in particular, uh, in this case, were, were implemented also instruction in five uh, different languages in order to meet uh, all the people that would be involved. And uh, according to the multi-ethnical um, uh, nature of the people that living in, in, that, in the, that areas in Milan. Uh, this case study of uh, collecting uh, of door-to-door -door collection was also launched uh, in another big city, New York City, in 2018. Uh, in this case, were involved uh, uh, residential building areas in Manhattan. Uh, the, the experiments were conducted uh, with, uh, in four weeks, uh, and all data and uh, were, were gathered in order to implement this uh, uh, this kind of uh, example in another big uh, biggest uh, biggest scale. Uh, in this case, uh, were fundamental uh, the tools that were applied, uh, also the compostable bags, in order to uh, collect uh, and achieve uh, a proper uh, a proper waste to be used in composting and also for anaerobic digestion. The capture of organic waste in this case was over that the 400 percent. It is another important aspect within the circular economy approach and bioeconomy approach. Uh, another uh, a case study, but uh, was uh, was uh, was uh, was performed and carried out with the food uh, with the, with the food catering, or in this case in collaboration with Milano Ristorazione. It is a company created by the municipality of Milan in 2001 in order to guarantee the catering service in public office. This experiment was particularly uh, focused on the uh, school catering. And so dishes and glasses made of compostable materials were, uh, were, um, were implemented. And uh, after different analysis, those materials were implemented since uh, actually the, this experiment was, uh, was started in 2015, but at the beginning were used cellular spot material, but those materials were not very um, uh, useful for this, uh, for this kind of uh, application for the restoration since the, uh, the, 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 hot, the hot meal uh, tended to uh, deform dishes and uh, the tableware. So by 2016, where uh, uh, cellular spout material were replaced with the matter B products and that, that meeting all the uh, service needs and all the, in particular, uh, allowing the uh, collection of uh, homogeneous waste stream in order to be um, disposable, disposed for uh, composting and also for the anaerobic digestion. It is another important model, not only for the collection to solve the problems of collection of uh, uh, urban bio waste, but also to uh, implement another uh, kind of, um, another use, an important use in, uh, in the restoration in the catering services. And that's it by my side. I'm terribly sorry for the technical inconvenience. Thank you. Thank you, Gianluca, for taking, taking again the presentation so fast and thank you to the audience for your for your patience yes. here yeah uh, thank you young luca i think you will recover the, the the pace of the session and we have one question from hilde marmendet from the university of stuttgart so uh, the question is have samples been taken at the treatment plants where the bio waste collected in the mother by baxi street in South Germany, fragments of these bags have been found in the compost and digestate organic fertilizers from treatment plants treating municipal bio waste. Mm -hmm. So, uh, all the materials made uh, made off of matter being applied for this kind of uh, of objective. So, these the organic waste collection are uh, uh, perfectly be um, fulfilling the requirements of the materials that that we use for compost and they are biodegradable and also used for compost. In particular, other application of this kind of materials made of matter B, for example, I use as much film in agriculture. So they cover the entire life cycle of, of the plant and they, are, um, and they could offer an organic uh, carbon to the, to the soil. So it's also important for the regeneration of uh, soil. Okay, Gianluca, thank you for your answer. Thank you, Hildemar, for your, for your question.
And uh, I think it is, if it is any, any more questions, if not, as you know, you could set the questions of the Q&A section in, in the webinar software. And at the end of the presentation, we will have uh, a, short, a short moment to, to, to solve all, uh, all the questions and discuss a little bit more about the topic. So I think Africa, we could continue with the, with the session. Absolutely. So let's move on. This is going to be our last presentation for today. And the speaker is going to be Tuomo, an innovation and circular economy specialist at Savonia University of Applied Sciences. So uh, please, Tuomo, go ahead, turn on your camera and share your presentation. Perfect. Oh, thank you, Africa. Can you can you see the presentation? Yes. Perfect. Okay, so uh, I, I work here in, in the Savonia University of Upper Sciences at, as part of the Savonia team and uh, as the circular economy and innovation expert. Thank you for inviting me to this webinar on safety and acceptance. Um, my topic is on the methods for evaluating social acceptance. Okay, I seem to have also some technical problems in, in moving to, to the next uh, slide. You have, uh, I think you have to click with the mouse in the arrow that is there at the bottom of the screen, you're just on it. I think if you do it, it will pass the slide. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, it doesn't work for some reason. Or maybe I have to uh, take this again. So I will stop sharing and uh, see if you can find a, find a solution for this. Tuomo, if you want to have your presentation, I can share it and and then you can tell me when to pass the slide. Okay, I, I have sent an updated slideshow just uh, like uh, one hour ago. So if you, if you could share that one. Yeah. But uh, for some reason, my, my computer is stuck for this one. I'm sorry for the delay. I'm on it. Okay. There you go. Okay, thank you. Let's let's go on. So uh, I will present methods on the how, how we evaluate social acceptance. Uh, of new bioproducts. Next one, please. Uh, as you know, the value waste product has three valorizing lines, and these are producing these uh, new, new bioproducts, which are related to food and feed uh, ingredients and also recycled plant nutrients. Next slide, please. Uh, the objective of task 8.3 at Palo Waste is to create joint understanding of the social acceptance and awareness of new bioproducts like food feed ingredients or plant-based recycled nut nutrients. And uh, this work is connected to other work packages uh, like on, on social life cycle assessment, which is led by Setenma and the business models development led by Savonia and also the work package on communication and dissemination. Next, please. So what do we mean with, with, uh, with social 
social acceptance. Next, please. Uh, the key components uh, we have here, uh, they are based on uh, uh, Rolf uh, Wüstenhagen's uh, uh, approach. So there are three key components of social acceptance. The first one is social political acceptance. This is more general level of social acceptance. Uh, social political acceptance effectively fosters and enhances market and community acceptance, for example, opening many options for new investors and context-based planning systems. And then we have community acceptance. This can be explained by the fact that people support new product as long as it is not in their own backyard. And then we have market acceptance. Social acceptance can also be interpreted as the process of market adoption of an innovation. It focuses on consumers' level of satisfaction. The market acceptance view is not just consumers, but also investors. Next, please. Uh, in Value Waste, we have also taken the social LCA. And, and this uh, is uh, very much related to the uh, social, social economic impacts uh, of the of the products and also the value chains that they have in value waste project. So on the other side, we have the social acceptance of citizens or consumers. And on the, on the other side, we have social LCA. And uh, the, the targets are very much uh, integrated to each other. So, so we are doing this work parallelly uh, at value waste and, and trying to also establish a model where we can uh, we can take into account both uh, point of views. Next, please. Okay, how how do we then work on this? Uh, in value waste, we have established interviews with uh, stakeholders and uh, interest groups. Uh, and, and so we have had like bilateral and small group discussions where we are asking for, for the insights and trying to see the, what, is the, what is the context for this uh, study. And this first uh, stage of interviews also determines the, the, next, uh, the next steps. Uh, the, sorry, I didn't say next slide, but the, but the, uh, so so the uh, after interviews we we have established a major workshop on social acceptance and social LCA, and uh, uh, most import, importantly, a survey questionnaire uh, on social acceptance and social LCA uh, at Murcia and Kalunborg uh, cities. Next, please. Uh, the survey questionnaire has uh, starts with the uh, introduction, of course, and then we ask for background uh, of the respondent, country of residence, education, gender, and age. And these are important because uh, we need to know who 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 answers our survey, so that we can then also analyze the results against these uh, background uh, factors. Next, please. Uh, the introduction of this survey uh, was made in, in three languages. And uh, obviously, we, we used the Kalunborg and Murcia experts to, to translate the, from, from English to, 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 to Spanish and Danish. And uh, so the respondent uh, can choose from this languages. Next, please. Uh, as a, a couple of examples on what we ask. So uh, this is an example. Do you agree on the following statements? And uh, uh, there are questions, for example, on uh, that. Uh, do we need new protein sources for humans or do we need new fertilizers and so on? Uh, also, there are some questions on bio-waste management. Uh, 
that how, how it should be uh, should be managed and and uh, what should be done with with bio waste and also uh, we asked for uh, if the respondent thinks this uh, these uh, topics are important, and uh, and uh, so these are not not actual results, but these represent more that uh, how do we ask? There is a scale from one to five, so so we, we use the Likert scale for uh, trying to classify the answers to by using the five. Uh, Five states Likert, Likert scale. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, the, the answers are from zero to five. Okay, next please. And we also have questions like yes and no. Uh, when we ask for the market market acceptance, uh, it's uh, also important to know if the citizens have any experience or if they have bought. Uh, these uh, these uh, this type of uh, bio, new bio products, like for example, protein bars or protein powder or something like that, and uh, and this is also uh, this is not a result from the study, but this is an example how we collect the uh, answers and uh, and uh, whether the market is uh, uh, like. Uh, accustomed to, to, to this type of products. Next, please. So, so we get these answers mainly uh, by applying the Likert scale. And, and uh, so, so we use this, uh, this scale to when we determine the, the public acceptance. Uh, but uh, this is a, the result is not directly uh, useful, so we have to apply a little bit, uh, and, and there is there are some studies by Thomson and Joyce and Thomson and Boutillier, uh, uh, and and they have used this withdrawal acceptance approval of psychological identification. So uh, so we are trying to understand the citizen behavior actually here, and the behavioral aspect is uh, is important. Next, please. And what we expect as a result? So we expect to get insights on citizen perceptions and social acceptance and awareness on environmental aspects. Uh, we will also get insights on the acceptance of citizens, including customer and end user on new circular economy products and services related to food feed protein with insects or bacteria or biofertilizers in relation to the value chains of value waste. And uh, by this information, we will learn on the consumer willingness to adapt new technologies, products and services. We will also develop and apply systematic approaches when developing circular economy business models. We will gain new insights on three aspects of social acceptance when developing new business on circular economy of urban bio waste. We also gather information on the changing needs, needs, wants, and demands, uh, which are they are different in different mindsets and cultures. So basically, mindsets, cultures, and different values, traditions, and priorities. Uh, they, 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 they are going to be different. So, and we are, we are trying to uh, understand this. Next, please. As a practical implication, understanding of social acceptance and its limitations will help us to design better products, services, and business models on circular economy. Understanding people's perceptions of bio waste and the utilization as a new resource on circular economy, the thoughts, feelings, and expectations is a key component of the project. By participating, the participants' values will influence industry practices and government policy and contribute to one of the most important project outcomes. Guidelines for industry, government, and communities on how to work 
together and ensure a more responsible bio waste management and their utilization as a sustainable resource for protein and fertilizer production. Next, please. As a conclusion, in order to help the new bioproducts to enter the market and make new circular economy business models, the social acceptance and social LCA need to be understood. And our report on the first insights of social acceptance, a public report will be published at the end of June. And then uh, I, I, thank, I thank this is uh, all from me for now. If there are questions, I'm, I'm available to answer. Thank you so much for your presentation, Tomo. I will leave you here within your further questions. Thanks, Tomo. Uh, now it's time for this. Is, this was the last presentation on this uh, webinar. Now it's time to, to questions for discussion. Very interesting. The, the, and the social scope, the social uh, part of this um, the acceptance of these bioproducts. So if there is if there is any question, remember you could uh, write it down in the Q&A section as we did it in previous, in previous uh, presentations. If not, uh, we, I, I invite the our colleagues to we could start this short uh, a few minutes of a short discussion where I have some questions for you and we all uh, for sure the questions from the audience is still uh, being welcome. So feel free to write down your questions. Uh, Tuomo, for you, uh, I have a question for you. And um, why do we need to study the social acceptance of these bio-based products? Why it's, uh, it's relevant, uh, not just the development of the solutions, but to study how, um, how society will accept or not these uh, products? Okay, thanks for the question. Uh, I think that the, the main challenge here is that the, we, do, we do not know enough on the social acceptance of these uh, new bioproducts and uh, we don't know on the customers or citizens. Uh, uh, so, so what type of behavioral change uh, would be needed? And uh, so th these are the main aspects we, we should understand uh, in order to, to get these new new bioproducts to the market. And also, so, the, so this is a kind of uh, uh, interaction between the, on the other hand, the production and on the other hand, on the consumption that, uh, that we, we have this uh, interaction to, to develop better, better products and uh, that, uh, better and acceptable products and also value chains. So that we also fulfill the sustainable development goal. I think, uh, thank you. I think the challenge you have on value waste project, because we were talking about the, the social acceptance of bio-based products based on, on, on waste. But then uh, in value waste, we have a double challenge. Uh, uh, tell me if I'm wrong, but that we have a double challenge because this waste becomes on to, on, on, into products as the insects, and then so which it has some social uh, relative acceptance, and then the uh, another area which is this methanotrophic uh, bacteria that probably is difficult to understand by the population what we are talking about. So uh, I, I I I'm not sure if you. Do you have any, or do you consider this could be the, the most challenging dimension of the social acceptance of these bioproducts? Is there any other um, area where the the residue, uh, the, the, this bioproducts acceptance, it's a challenge, uh, in, especially? Well, of course, the the use of bio waste is here the thing, and if if we want to for example, produce some food. Uh, but I think that it, these uh, social acceptance studies have already uh, affect, affected the production also, that uh, it has gone more to, to feed, feed direction. Yeah. And also that we are talking about the ingredients 
not, not the food products or, or feed product as such. Nah, great. Thank you. Thank you, Tomo, for, for your question. Uh, continue with the discussion. Um, Gianluca, welcome, welcome again. I have a question for you. This, and it, uh, which technologies are applied at this moment for the valorization of waste? And what implications do they have on the safety of these bioproducts? How these valorization methodologies could impact on the safety of these uh, bio-based products? Okay, thank you very much for the question, Inigo. Yes, as well, uh, as I was exposed before, uh, uh, particular attention was paid uh, to the use of uh, uh, innovative technologies uh, for the application of, uh, for the valorization of this kind of waste. Uh, in particular, uh, uh, some, some of them will be used and integrated in our technology, uh, uh, for in particular for the sugars deriving from OFMSW within Excalibur for the generation of new bio building blocks to be used for the bioplastics, in particular for uh, uh, flexible application. And for the use of oil, uh, we, um, uh, we, we saw uh, an increasing attention to this kind of the valorization of this kind of material, this kind of bio waste. And uh, an important issue is the um, appropriate collection of these waste, as well as we implemented and optimized different procedures for the, um, uh, for the application of chemicals, uh, in particular looking at the recycling of chemicals that have been applied in the pretreatment of this kind of waste uh, in order to, um, uh, to, to, to use in a proper way with, uh, within our technologies. So particular attention was paid with the optimization of procedures, in particular for the utilization of uh, chemicals and their recycling. Uh, at the end, so those binding blocks uh, uh, are applied into um, a particular application uh, of uh, bioplastics. And in this case, all the products uh, that will include the, those building blocks will be uh, checked, will be, um, um, uh, will, will fulfill the requirements of the legislation for this application. As I told you, the, 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 the particular uh, attention was paid for the legislation of biodegradable and compostable products according to the strict, strict requirements that have been imposed by EU. So all the products have been, will be checked and will be uh, satisfy the requirements of biodegradability and compostability. Great, thank you for your answer, Gianluca. But this is not, a, we have another question from the audience, from, from Miguel, again from the Denma. Uh, the question is from Gianluca. What is the current legal framework of, for application of bioplastics obtained from waste into food packaging? Are there special requirements and standards needed for approval? Yeah, yeah the standards, uh, we, we, we follow the, the standards that are imposed by the EU legislation. As I told you before, uh, one is the, uh, the, the requirements for the biodegradability and compostability. The, uh, the, the EU uh, 13432 uh, uh, requirements. Though to all those products uh, have been demonstrated and established to be compostable and biodegradable, not only in soil, but also in uh, marine environments. So we take particular attention for these uh, this kind of requirements of products. So all the products that Novamont implemented, uh, also with the use of bio-based products, also coming from bio-waste, will test and will be uh, particular attention was paid for their uh, uh, compostability and biodegradability aspects. Great, thank you, Gianluca. Um, and just the last question, because we are running out of time, and the last question is for Amaya for, from Liker. Uh, Amaya, I would like to ask you uh, what should be improved in the novel food assessment, which is the the most critical points to be improved in the current assessment that you, that the novel foods should um, develop? Uh, well, I think now at this moment, uh, the part or the point that is less um, known or less studied, and I said in, in, my, in my presentation that it was challenging, was the allergenicity uh, assays or the allergenicity studies. Because uh, now what we do is that if um, if the food uh, novel food comes from a known um, 
allergen of from a food that uh, has an allergen known, uh, then directly the novel food is, is labeled like that. Uh, but if it's not the case, we go um, um, to the context of the most available protein in that novel food. But sometimes we need to do, we need to have more uh, better databases, more uh, and, and improved bioinformatic approaches, improve the protein digestion protocols to study this allergenicity and to know if this protein uh, of this novel food will provoke or induce an adverse effect. So, um, and more predictive in vitro or in vivo um, approaches. So I would all relate it to the allergenicity, which is the less uh, covered part of the, of the safety assessment. You are muted. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh, thank you, Maya. Quite interesting to take into account this, uh, the allergenicity of the, the allergen presence in, in the bioproduct that we, we are going to assess. I think uh, we, are, we, we conclude our discussion session just to Africa. We could uh, just say goodbye to our audience that uh, was really helpful. Yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, can you share the slides, the final slides for me a second? Sorry? The final slides, yeah. do you think you can share them? Yeah. So uh, in the meantime, I just wanted to thank all the speakers, uh, take the moment for, for being here and for adapting to the technological issues we had and for your amazing presentations. And to the audience, now that the presentation is coming, uh, let's stay in touch. Contact us if you have further questions or you want to learn more. Follow our projects on social media because all the projects you have seen here and value waste, um, uh, value, the projects you see below, uh, value waste, hoop, waste up, Excalibur, they all have social media accounts where they uh, update, give updates and, and share what they are doing. Um, and of course, join the Hope Network of Cities and Regions. And if you want to know more, go to their web, web page and, and learn about it. And I think there's one last slide. And uh, just as the last step, I wanted to invite you all to go to the last webinar of this series, which will be about policy influence the 30th of June. If you still are not registered, uh, please go ahead and do so. And if you know someone who might be interested in the topic, uh, invite them, invite them as well. Thank you so much. This was all on our side. We are very happy to have shared this moment with you and we hope to see you soon. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a nice day and see you on the next webinar session. Goodbye. Goodbye.